Howdy, my name is Bruce Brown and I am the president of Tabletop Alliance. Tabletop Alliance is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that exists to develop and equip educators and community leaders with the tools and the resources and knowledge to use games to further their outcomes. And so part of that is really acknowledging the great work that's going on in the field and bringing us all together. And I've had the privilege of getting to know this gentleman for the last couple of days uh, because of some amazing work that's going on. Um, so what? long story short, we're gonna be talking with Nathaniel today. And Nathaniel has been working towards his Eagle Scout program. He's gonna tell you all about this, but long story short, he's done an amazing job of collecting and then curating games to go into libraries in his local area to make an impact on his local community for even after this project exists. And so without further ado, I am just gonna bring on Nathaniel because it's really his story you're here to hear. And I encourage you to ask questions in the chat and to encourage him because he is doing one heck of a great job. And so with that, Nathaniel, hi. Hi. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us today. Um, can you just give your uh, give a quick rundown and then we're gonna launch right into your presentation because you have such a great story to tell. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, my name is um, Nathaniel Weboa. Um, I'm a Boy Scout, right? I'm going for my Eagle Project, and it's about my board game donation drive that I'm working on for my libraries. Awesome, so much. So I know you have a, a kind of a walkthrough of this whole experience, a little bit about you. So how about you share your screen, and I'm going to turn myself off of this camera so they can hear directly from you. How about that? Okay, yes, it works fine. Yes, so this is my board game donation Eagle Drive Scout project. Like I said, let me talk about a little bit about myself, right? Hi, you know, like I said, I'm Nathaniel Weboa. I'm a senior in high school and I'm in Boy Scout Troop 2860. I've been playing games since 2014. It really took off as a passion and, and a hobby. The first official game I was given as a kid was King of Tokyo. I taught all my friends and started playing everything. We now own over 500 titles in my games collection. As you can also see, I have a couple of the board game cakes that I've had over the years as well. Another thing about me is that I've attended Gen Con three times so far. I love playing games for four days straight in Indianapolis and cannot wait to go back to a big game convention. These are just a few picks from each time I went I was there. As well as I part-time I teach games to children at different elementary schools in, this, in the area. My mom does this job regularly. It mostly, it's mostly summer programs or after school clubs, so I enjoy helping when my schedule follows. My school also has weekly board game clubs, and I started up one in my middle school in the library. I bring no titles to teach and play each week. Over the years, I think I've played over 2,000 games. I game at home with my parents, at school, at many cons, with friends, and Boy Scouts. This all led to the idea for my Eagle Project, a board game donation drive to benefit my community. So let me talk about the process for my project. The first thing deciding who is this going to benefit in my community. I brainstormed and decided to ask our local librarian about starting to offer games. My closest library was very supportive and agreed to the beneficiary. I needed approval from my scoutmaster, the committee, and the district board to move forward. There is an extensive packet of pack paperwork filled out with this process and a lots of acquired, acquiring for signatures. I presented my proposal for a few different times in person and over Zoom. Thankfully, my drive was approved, and they loved the idea as something new and fresh within the community. In the month of September, we officially started with announcements on social media. I gave weekly in-person announcements at my scout meetings and posted to our neighborhood Facebook page. This is the video I actually had on there as well. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, basically, so yes, I requested games for people to clean their game closets and give the unplayed and outgrown titles a new life. New was also fine, but gently used games are great. This ended up being a very successful approach. I received almost 200 games with 138 of them being unique titles. They slowly piled up in my dining room corner. My next step is cataloging what I'd been given. I'd been using the website Notion to keep track of all the games. 
My goal is to get through each box and type up an easy follow put away guide for players during clean clean. My biggest hurdle has been figuring out how things will get put back as random people play them at the library. I'll be the library's contact for the next year and they can decide to pull games off the floor if they get too beat up or lose pieces and have me come get them. I plan to check bi-monthly to take stock of what might be needed or reorganized. Also, each box will get a sticker stating this from my Eagle Project donation. This is the current step I'm working on. I've met again with the CCPS staff to choose a November launch day for the library to officially announce and show off that they will now have in-house games to play. Our current times may require a staggering sign up for playing games during launch day, following all protocols for safety as per our local guidelines. My initial goal has been 100 games, and I'm really happy with the participation, participation that was given in and it totally exceeded my expectations. Friends, family members, neighbors, my scout troop, and even strangers helped me out make this happen. I cannot wait to get these games into the hands of eager kids and families in my community. Thank you for listening to the presentation, and I hope this gave a little insight into my Eagle Project. Nathaniel, uh, first of all, I just have to say, amazing job. Uh, it's uh, more than obvious that you've given this a lot of care and thought uh, and that your community is going to be so ecstatic. And so with that, I'm curious, what's the feedback been from the librarians? Yeah, I, they're, really, they're really excited to have games and they want, you know, it's something that's new and different, I think, but that they really are really happy for because even during this time that they were not actually able to have a lot of stuff out right now and we're trying to work out ways to actually play games right as i stated but we're just we're they're so happy just to have the games there because people can come to the library and be able to enjoy something that everyone can just play on their own time so and i appreciate that so much i know you just mentioned that it's been hard for a lot of people right and um that this is really great to rebring people together as it's safe to do so um that said though i know as gamers we can often get the question of from somebody who hasn't gone to a Gen Con yet or gone to these different <laughs> games or played all the games, right? Um, so you're playing games like Monopoly, right? Yeah. And well, so, I, yeah. yeah. So how are you navigating, helping them navigate this for the library? Yeah. So a lot of the games, I got, a, I got lots of duplicates, even like I think seven copies of Shoots and Ladders. But I think that's great because it's, it's all for, you know, children and families to understand and get um, in depth of insight of playing new games, right? So not all of them, maybe they could start with Monopoly because not all of them may own it, even though there's multiple copies in, around, you know, but it's a great start to see games. And even if you come to the library, you can even, it's like, oh, I really like this game. And then it could be even something towards the Christmas or other seasons where it's like, or birthdays, or it's like, oh, I really like this game. I want to get this game. And then it could be a great present for people or just other games you might want to play in the future as well. Yeah. And so obviously we all have different experiences, right? And so getting them to enjoy this, meet them where they're at is wonderful. And so I am curious if you are to be encouraging someone to go to these library events, right? What would you say to somebody um, if you were to be like, hey, I'm putting on this event um, who maybe hasn't ever really dug into board games before? Yeah, I mean, I would I would talk to them. It's like, hey, you, you like playing games, right? That's a great, you know, if I mean, they could have, they might not have a lot of hobbies or, you know, they just, they could make it a new hobby. Like for myself, right? I started with King of Tokyo and I loved playing games from then on, right? Any, any game can get you into the, in the hobby and get you started. And, you know, there's so many games out there that not every, there's probably, there's going to be a game for everyone, right? Not everyone has to like the one game of Monopoly, right? Because not everyone does, but they all together in some way, you will be able to find one game eventually. And by Absolutely. playing games, you're able to explore all the games that are out there. And so I think that's really where it comes down to for these 138 different unique games, right? It's giving people opportunity of choice, right? And yes. so uh, you're providing ample choices and you're so supportive of everybody. And so I was curious, what have you learned in this process? Well. There's a lot. There's a lot of games, right? And I think that you know, a lot of organization that needs to be involved, and you have to plan. You a lot of planning has to go into it, right? When you have to do anything, but it's really important to figure out what you need to like. You have to organize it very well and make sure that the library even understands what's going on too, because it's like, okay, I have my games, 
and I'm going to organize these, and then I will be giving to you at a certain date, right? Yep. And that, that's the whole process that needed to be done. And this is even with the packet where it's like you have the steps of it in itself where you're learning. It's like, what, what do you plan beforehand? And then get it signed off. And then this is during the project. And even the afterthoughts of, well, after, what have you reflected on, right? And this mm -hmm. is, that's the whole project in itself of giving it to the community. But you're, it's the whole process of doing it is been something that's just been a learning, learning experience. And that's great. And I love the fact that this is a learning experience for you and it is your project, right? And so, yes. <laughs> uh, but I love the fact of you saying your project is not just doing the stuff on the front end, but preparing them and having that community ready to sustain it even after you're gone, right? Uh, and so we're able to empower the community around us through our intentional actions. And I think you're doing that in spades, by the way. Um, <laughs> and so I am curious, what are you most excited about? Well, I'm really happy that the actual, like people can actually explore a lot of the games because, you know, not everyone gets to experience all of the games or they get just maybe stuck with the Monopoly or any of the other basic games you might think of on the top of your head with the extensive list even that I put all those games that I had on the screenshots were all of them that I've collected so far. And I think that some of them you may not know. And I think that's just great for families to be able to understand that. And they're actually able to learn. Yeah. And that's going to be really great to see happen. Um, and those little moments, right? And so with that, you talked about sustaining the collection. I'm curious, what advice would you give to um, a school or a library that's looking to have a game collection and what considerations should they be thinking about of monitoring and upkeeping them afterwards? Yeah, um, with, with games, it's, um, I think you have to make sure, right, like whoever's using them, you got to make sure, right, like there's probably rules or something, like make sure that these games, you don't like, don't trash them, right? That's a basic understanding of all rules, right? Or um, make sure you're careful with cards, don't rip anything that's in them, right? And the other thing is that even with my library, they restricted certain stuff. Like you couldn't use electronic pieces or anything like uh, speak out or whatever with the mm. mouthpieces because uh, one, COVID, but two, it's just like you can't have a lot of kids touching just overall in general and electronics because batteries eventually die. So it's making sure of what you have. And then also if you have your games, maybe, you know, like with mine, I'm going to be checking bi-monthly. So you just every check once in a while, you know, you always can, if you're in the library as well or you're in your club, Right? You can just go in. If you open your game every once in a while and you check, you can figure out if this is if the game is truly thrown like bad or just like I guess worn out over time, that you always can try to replace it, right? Mm -hmm. Buying a new copy if you need to, or having another copy, or even if some pieces are missing, if you can replace it, mm -hmm. which I'm planning to do for cataloging, right? With maybe with the seven copies of shoot and shoots and ladders, maybe not all of them have all the parts. So I'm planning uh -huh. to figure out to mix pieces together and make sure that we have a full set and be able to actually have use playable sets, right? And I think that's also very important. You know, I actually think back to some publishers I've heard on different interviews and talking to them for when, let's say there's a production error, right? Of, hey, this one little piece didn't get into the final component. They'll mm -hmm. hold back some copies just so that way they could send it out in case somebody happens to be missing it. So it sounds like the same thing for shoots and ladders. Uh, <laughs> yes. Maybe hold one back that might not be complete but because you can then make other sets complete if things happen. Um, yes. I think that sounds really, really great. Uh, so I am curious, what's the reception been like within the Scouts? Because uh, this is a pretty unique process, uh, project. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, so I was able to do, I did um, every, every time we had a Scout meeting, we had announcements and I was able to go up there. You know, I basically almost had what my video said in a sense, it's like, Hey, I got, you guys can donate games to me, right? It's going to the libraries for people to play. And we, you know, so I actually got from the majority of those games, lots of them are from the scouts. So that's it was wonderful. able to bring a lot of games in. And that's why a lot of it is just so much was from just the donations of people from everyone, even just mostly scouts though, which was really helpful. That's really, really kind. Um, I'm curious because other scouts might see this, right? And see... Uh, some of the great impact that you're making, what advice would you give to somebody who is like, that sounds really cool, and that sounds like a cool impact I can have here locally, uh, but might not have your level of experience, but just might be inspired. What advice would you give to them? Yeah, totally. I mean, um, one of the things that I did was I reached out to a couple of publishers even, and oh. I just wrote up an email as like, 
you know, about me being an Eagle Scout and bringing games. And I actually did get a couple of um, companies actually public give me games to my project as well, which is amazing, right? Because they're able to actually support and it's great for them to for what it is. And That's even amazing. You, yeah, it, it was a, an amazing thing to just, you know, just reaching out, I think, right? Because even with my library, it's like it was during COVID. It's like I, wa I wanted to do my project. Of for for doing games, so I I just wrote an email to my local library about an eagle project, and I was able to get a contact from the library. Just talking, to, we just had like you know, a meeting inside, and it was just a quick you know a meeting just to like what the plan is for what we could plan for. Is even even early steps, right? One of my steps was I, if you think about it, I wanted even board games to be kind of like a library, right, where you could like check in in and out. But the thing is that you know your library might not be able to do that, and mine could Ooh. mine could not because they would have to have some library and actually have, you know, they'd have to have the tags and everything and make sure all the games are there and even more work for them. But that's something that maybe if you, if you can make it possible, if you want to, it's just that even during that time too, it was compl a, a, a little too much to do, but it's, you could still do what we have is we're planning on doing like in our library, like a give a game, take a game, like they have puzzles. Oh. So some of the, even like, cause we got electronic games and stuff. There's like, those games can go on that shelf and people could take them home still and play them on their own time. Mm -hmm. And then the games that are in the library, they kind of just leave there and people can still play them and then, you know, potentially still buy them in the future as well. Yeah, so that's great. I just want to re recap what you just said because you just gave a lot of really yes. cool ideas there. <laughs> so you gave the idea, first of all, amazing that you care, right? Amazing that you want to make that impact. And so go and talk to your library go and talk to them and see what's going to be possible, right? Uh, they might be able to do a checkout system. They might just be able to have you come and do events. Um, those, that was the advice there. But then you said for the games that are in the library, it might be just checking them out while they're there and play them there for your events or otherwise. But there might be kind of this exchange area where they give a game or uh, give a puzzle and take a game and kind of keep cycling through them. Like those, honestly, the little free lending libraries we see. In yeah, that too. Houses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there's many options it sounds like you could do. The key is figuring out for your, for your organization and context what is going to make sense for that, given yes. their capabilities and that community that you have. And I think that is such amazing advice Nathaniel like that's amazing <laughs> yeah bring in bring in and invite the conversations of the people who are going to be impacted by it and so Nathaniel I just am curious as we're wrapping up here is there anything else from your experience that you know what like going in you had this vision and was there any surprises um, good bad that you learned from um, or otherwise just so that way we can pave the way for others yeah, I mean, if even early brainstorming, right, for games, you, you don't have to do libraries, right? Because with mine, you know, Eagle Projects are just benefiting the community. So you could benefit anywhere that's a community to be able to supply to whoever you want, right? Like it, libraries are a very open idea, right? Because libraries are, everyone can access them. So that was just a great place you can go. But, you, you know, you can still impact your schools if you want to and stuff, because that was even early ideas of just like my brainstorming process of that. And then even the like the library checkout system was just something that was also on there, but it was just the, the library said they couldn't. But I, I think I wasn't discouraged by that because I was still able, we still thought up ways of making this still possible. And I think that's what's great too. Yeah, they're not, it's not impeding your progress. Rather, you're more clearly defining the sandbox of which you get to play. Um, and then it's, you, at the end of the day, you still get to play and make your impact. And I love, I love that sentiment. And Nathaniel, I just have to say it again. I know he opened with this and was kind of taken aback of words, but in all seriousness, amazing job. Um, and I cannot say thank you enough for trying to make a positive impact through games because we all have gotten to get these experiences going to conventions, playing all these games, uh, but that's not something everybody gets to do. And so the fact that you're sharing that and bringing the community get together and not only looking at the implementation, but the follow-up and how do you stay tuned and help that community grow. Uh, thank you um, so much and keep up the amazing wor work. Is there any kind of closing words you'd like to say? And then I'll kind of wrap us up from there. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you, this is something that I, basically anyone can do. I mean, it doesn't have to be your Eagle project, but just 
letting people play games is something great in itself and it should just be a hobby and a passion that people all around the world should experience. Absolutely, Nathaniel. I couldn't say it better myself. Uh, I know you have a lot of games to go catalog, so <laughs> I'm going to let you go do that. But seriously, amazing work. Um, and I cannot wait to see how the library reacts and, and, and how all this go shakes out from uh, six months, a year from now. So definitely that be sending in photos so we can celebrate you and celebrate all this great work going on in your community. But you have an amazing night and I will talk yes. to you later. Yes, uh, thank you. Of course, it's great to have you on. So that was Nathaniel doing some amazing work in, uh, in his local community. And if you are inspired by that, I encourage you to reach out um, and because we would love to help you as well um, or help connect with those librarians. So if you felt inspired by this, We'd love to support you in that journey, just like we had Nathaniel on for this. And so again, if you wanna learn more about us, we're Tabletop Alliance. We're a 501c3 nonprofit. And you can go to tabletopalliance.org to learn more. And we're working with educators all across the US as well as community leaders. So go out and make your positive impact through gaming and leave communities better than you found them, just like Nathaniel is.